Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where we just met one of Samara's children, remaining children, who is an art at Yakshi. Um, and we are trying. You'd need a crowbar to pry those doors open. This place was beautiful before the Reapers came. I mean, it still looks pretty good, really. But probably, there, realistically, there'd be a lot more, like, carnage, probably. Um, but they aren't trying to kill the Ardai Yakshi. They are obviously trying to turn them into Reaper entities. Um, but yeah, we're trying to go help save Rila. The Reaper rumors. Yeah, okay. They are fairly isolated, so you'd think they probably, the Reapers would have gotten here later. Blurg. Is that an art at Yachty in the back? Oh. oh no, it's a Marauder. Okay, but they, they're both spiny looking. Stop eating it! Oh my gosh, stop eating. Ah. Little bastards. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's right, this is a cool gun. Let's see. Oh, I do like the one I am currently using. The Disciple. I think this one looks cool. I can't remember if it actually is cool. I'm gonna stick with what I have because I've been enjoying it immensely. But, yep, newest shotgun. And a sorry weapon. This kind of reminded me of like Project Overlord where you're like running around and it's like super dark and scary and there's like creepy voices and stuff. But I remember I was actually, I was so scared when I first um, freaking played this. I, I think I might have left. I think I might have like reloaded and like gone away. Like you go down, you get to the stairs and you're like, you're going in and you hear that scream for the first time. I was so scared. So scared. <laughs> Uh, I had the new girl put in a holding chamber, the Jastikar who brought her to us, Jastikar for us, that she had trouble convincing the prisoner coming to the monastery was necessary. This may explain why the girl lashed out of her guards. She's lucky four wasn't here for that. The Jastikar's code would have demanded an execution. I'll question some other Jastikars on the level of coercion for us permitted to use by the code. This isn't the first time her captures arrive here terrified out of their wits, but it will certainly be the last. Interesting. Jethro looked over this year's candidates for supervised visits to Thessia. I'm approving everyone but Yanis. She's impulsive, cunning, and worst of all, a romantic. Find me a worse combination to let outside our walls. I find it suspicious she was even nominated. Let's look into that and pray it's not Yanis manipulating another infatuation. It takes a great deal of time and effort to persuade Thessia's government to let our best students visit their own homeworld. Unless Yanis matures, she won't be among them. Yeah, she sounds like, um... Morinth, right? Where it's like... Cunning, romantic, you know, that's that's a deadly combination for an art at Yakshi. I feel like though sometimes I saw that being told you're a monster only turns you into one, you know? And maybe the monastery is oh god. Maybe the monastery isn't uh telling them they're monsters, but please please don't I suck. I'm bad. I'm bad. Why? It just like went right through her. I am just going right through her. Oh, nice. That was very powerful. Uh, yeah, I have to catch their full death animation. There's something about it that I, in particular, that I always notice. 
I want to see if I can show it to you guys. Oh, nice. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I think it's not its not necessarily the, the monastery even needs to tell you a monster. It's that your society tells you you're a monster, you know? Like, everybody, they're not like children when they get here. They're adults, you know? They're, they're usually very young, even by, you know, like, by Asari standards, right? But they're, they're, like, they know the stories about Ardot Yakshi, you know? And then they, they're told they are one and to be dragged in like a prisoner like a criminal, like, it just, people are like, fine, if you want me to be a monster, I'll be a monster, you know? Another dead commando. Was she holding off reapers, or was she left behind? Commandos work as teams. She would have volunteered to guard this point. Hope she took some down before she died. And this is the other thing we need to recognize, since I think I hopefully edited out those sort of spoilery thing at the very end of the last episode that I was, like, too excited and let slip. Um... We are only finding Commando Asari bodies. We are not finding Arda Yakshi bodies. So that is something else to take into account. Like they've already they've already mentioned, right? Like like uh, Valera already mentioned that they are taking Rila off, and we've already got we've got Asari Arda Yakshi. We've got Asari. What do you call um, Banshees, right? And they're obviously being made out of the Arda Yakshis. And not the RSRA commandos. And I guarantee you the Ardite actually would have put up a fight, you know? Did my game? Okay. Like, it's not like they would have. Um. It's like like it's not like oh just the commandos weren't taken because they put up a fight you know and they had to be killed to, to get to get further in it's like they are they actually are bio like all Asari are biotics like you know ominous this is ominous there's our bomb and Falaire Rila wake up Rila Rila cannot hear us look she's still alive I know. I'm afraid Rila is not one. Rila's not one of them yet. She can't be. She just needs to wake up. Rila? Uh, Rila, can you hear me? They've begun to turn her into one of the Reaper's creatures. I'm sorry. Can we set off that bomb? Not without a detonator. I don't know why we need to set it off. The commandos would have had one. We've got to find it. The building isn't a threat. Later. Not husks. Uh, freaking, freaking, fragging. Oh, no, 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 please. Okay, good. Uh. She suck. Stop. I have to reload because I suck. Hate that. Hate that for me. I didn't catch the beginning of it. Is there a freaking? There's another one. Gosh. What's 
the last one. Alright, so that is the whole animation. Okay. Hang on, we gotta make sure. Man, I forgot. I don't I don't think we can save Rila. That's right. Samara's just whole life is essentially a tragedy. It's coming. Just go. Move. No, Rila. I love you, Rila. I'm really disappointed that Samara didn't leave her with some words. daughter who's so I guess okay this is a good reason to destroy the facility is if it's full of banshees Few can break the Reaper's hold. Rila's will was extraordinary, as was her love for you. We left her to die. Rila made her choice, and it has reminded me of what is truly important. Why I swore I'd lay down my life. What is that? Valer? The code demands an Ardat Yakshi cannot live outside a monastery that no longer exists. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Shepard. By the Justicar's code, there is only one way to save Valer. Mother, no! My daughters, you were all so much... Let go. What are you doing? Fulfilling the code. By throwing your life away? I won't kill my last daughter. You won't have to. Valer? I'll stay here. Home. No matter what's become of it. Without a proper monastery, I could have left any time. I don't need a building to honor my own code. And if the Reapers return, they won't take me alive, I promise. Then, the code permits you to stay, as you are. Samara's like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> Once this war is over, and if I am able, I will visit, as a Justicar should. Uh, so, yeah, Samara's just, yeah, she's got to, she had to kill her one child, and then she had to watch the other one die. And I, I, again, I hate, I, and maybe I could let the scene go on for a little longer, I'm just always afraid I'm gonna miss it, but when she was saying, you know, 
you are all stronger than I ever thought, you know, and I'm, like, so proud of you or whatever, you know, but, like, Samara wasn't going to kill her daughter. She was going to kill herself because she was going to break the code. She couldn't kill her last daughter, you know, because this one really hadn't done anything, you know, but, I mean, the monastery is still kind of here, I guess. I don't know, again, like, how is the outside of the building fine and the inside's not? I don't know. But, yes. I'd understand if you wanted to help Valera rebuild a home here. It must wait now that I can help oppose the Reapers. I'll speak with Valera, then join your forces. If you'll have me, of course. I'd be honored. The honor is mine, my friend. I wish. I wish you could join my forces. Everything's taken care of down here. Bring in the shuttle. Right, Commander. I'll just follow the smoke. As per usual. I read your report, Commander. We had no idea the situation had deteriorated so quickly. That's why I set off the bomb. There are no Ardat Yakshi left. May the Ardat Yakshi find rest. What the Reapers did to them was monstrous. I had another team of commandos headed to the monastery who I can now formally transfer to Admiral Hackett's command. They'll serve you loyally, Commander. Farewell. Commander, Admiral Hackett's available on video. Alright, let's get that. Commander Shepard, something you need to talk about? Uh, um... What about the extra help we picked up along the way? The Krogan and Turians have obviously been a big help. Erdnog Rex running the show is a bonus for us. Had that female Krogan you rescued survived, yeah. she might have rallied more support from the clans, but I'll take what we can get. I'm glad you disabled that mom on Tachanka. We could have lost a lot of Krogan support. As it is, we picked up some Turian troops. Good to hear. What about the Asari? Since the coup attempt, the Asari have stepped up to the plate. They're committing fleets and sending a science team to work on the Crucible. And believe it or not, they promised us the Destiny Ascension. They haven't forgotten you saved it three years ago. Da, 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 da. How about the Solarians? They sent the entire fleet as a thank you for rescuing their Oh, counselor. wow. I guess they managed to overlook the genophage cure. See? There's no fallout there. Like, why would, why would you sabotage things? You know, I don't know. Like, I guess knowing the outcome, it's like, why would you sabotage it? But in the moment, you wouldn't know the outcome necessarily, you know? But also, like, is one Asari Dalatras going to be able to, like... Because it's not like... I, I don't think it's just one in charge of everything, right? Um, I, I don't think so. But it's like, even if she is one in charge of everything, if, ever, if all the other Solarians are like, hey, the Reapers are on our doorstep, this is the best way to do things, is to, like, go with the humans or whatever... And do help with them, like she's gonna get overruled, you know? What about Arya's mercenaries? Arya Talok, there's someone I never thought we'd be in bed with. The blood pack will be useful and violent. Mostly Vorchai here. We'll put the Blue Suns to good use. Intel says Narnar Vosk is bringing his men and that they're gunning for a fight. The Eclipse are providing troops and mechs. When we find a Reaper soft spot, they'll help us hit it. Don't want to know how you got Arya's cooperation. Mm. But whatever you did, it was worth it. I mean, I didn't have to do anything super terrible. <laughs> what about the Rachni? I wouldn't have believed it, but the Rachni are helping us build the Crucible. You're kidding. Turns out they have a knack for weapons of mass destruction. In hindsight, I guess they'd know a thing or two about waging a galactic war. No problems with them, then? Other than scaring the hell out of our engineers, no. Not a lot of small talk going on there. Not that you know of. Do you know how the other races are doing against the Reapers? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the Turians are getting stretched thin, even with Krogan help. The Solarians are still hanging on to Sirkesh, but the Reapers are starting to breathe down their necks, too. What about the Asari? They have to be feeling the heat. The Reapers are moving fast with the obvious intent of taking Thessia. Interestingly, the Reapers are leaving Parnak alone. It's the Yogg homeworld. Can't say that I blame them. Yogg have teeth. Well, if we lose this war, it might be them yes. the next cycle. 
It's easy to forget the Reapers don't destroy every species. Just the ones who can threaten them. You have to have reached a certain uh, level of technological advancement. Any word on the Volus and Elcor? The Turians and the Krogans sent forces to the Volus homeworld, Evrum. It might not be enough, but at least they've got Reaper forces bogged down in a nasty ground war. As for Elcor, they're still in the fight, though our projections show the Reapers encroaching on their territory soon. What happened to the Batarians? Never stood a chance, hit by the Reapers straight out of the gate. And without any allies to call on, I think the Batarians are history. There's a few of them left, but whether or not it's enough to be a viable race after everything, you know? Have we heard anything from the Quarians or Geth? Beyond those reports I mentioned, no. Instability along the Geth border is all we've heard. In this war, that could mean anything. What's our state of readiness, Admiral? I won't lie, Shepard. We're bogged down. Things aren't looking good in most sectors. We need to increase the tempo and chalk up some wins, otherwise... This won't end well for the human race. Or any race. Bye. Nothing more, sir. Keep me posted. Hack it out. Okay. For the Art of Yakshi, I think, I think there's a facility we come to later that talks about it a bit more. But let me see... I can find... The Asari. No. The Asari were the first... Uh, I don't know how to do any of these buttons. Arda Yakshi, Demon of the Night Winds, are Asari suffering from genetic disorder preventing conventional melding of nervous systems during mating. Instead, Arda Yakshi electrochemically ravage their partner's nervous systems in extreme cases, leaving victims as vegetative invalids or corpses. Asari psychologists regard this incapacity for mental fusion as preventing the development of empathy, leading to psychopathy. There is no known cure. The disorder generally begins in infancy, reaching its full pathology during maiden adolescent sexual development. While seductive and sexually driven as other Asari, Arayakshi are congenitally sterile. Ancient Asari mythology held Arayakshi as gods of destruction, depicting them as villains of countless legends and as the anti-heroes of numerous Asari epics. Contrary to popular belief, Arayakshi are neither extremely rare, around 1% of the Asari dwell on the AY spectrum, nor are they all murderers. Most cultivate and discard countless exploitative or abusive relationships during their legally marginal lives. Despite rumors... Um, this is, a, a, I guess, so harsh. The most cultivate and discard countless exploitative or abusive relationships during their legally marginal lives. Like, they're not murderers, they're just psychos, but they're not all psychos. Despite rumors of Arda Yakshi syndicates, by nature, Arda Yakshi are incapable of long term cooperation. As disproportionately wealthy species, Asari employ their economic reach and media ownership to hide the AY pathology from the galactic community, placing most Arda Yakshi in monitor work programs or seclusion. Only the most aggressive cases are sentenced to sanitaria or prisons or to the execution list of Jessicar. And this is a direct um, rehashing, uh, redoing of what Samara told us in Mass Effect 2 that Arda Yakshi are extremely rare and that her children were the only known ones of like the current, like currently known ones, um, those three children. Um, and I think you can kind of look at it as potentially Samara lying to cover up, um, you know, like because she's, because she's a sorry and her her culture like covers up the existence of the Arda Yakshi because truly such a thing would be kind of scary to know that like Asari who are supposed to be this suit and it's like it's interesting right like they're supposed to be this super peaceable like democratic republic um you know they they're they're diplomats for like every race essentially almost you know they get along with everybody they're able to reproduce with everybody you know they're supposed to be very galactic minded uh very pers like very um able to get along with everybody um but then they have this in their back pocket like every culture right every every group has its like secrets every group has its outliers you know um and this is this is a big one for the asari it's just such an opposite of what they're supposed to be able what, what they're supposed to represent for their image you know um but like any group there's there's a wide variety of individuals and people, you know? Um, not that Arda actually get to choose this, they're born this way. Um, and it's interesting because um, psychopaths and sociopaths um, in real life, as far as I know, like often, again, there, there are not a bunch, but there are some, and I've, I've seen some like videos, of, like, like analysis videos and stuff where like some of them Will, like go to conferences or something where stuff like this talked about and they're like 
they're like, every time I see myself on the media, I'm, I'm a murderer, you know? And like the vast majority of them aren't murderers. Like many of them, la- they lack empathy. That's like the whole thing I think about psycho, like I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, but like psychopathy. Um, is that they do, they lack empathy, but they can create structures. Like they can, they can learn cultural norms. Like they're not stupid and they're not crazy, you know? They're just, they, they do lack empathy. And so it's interesting that this is sort of in, included in the Adat Yakshi thing, but we just saw like Rila loved her sister, right? Like those two, they were all each other really had, you know? Um, I mean, they had like the other Asari, obviously, but like it seems like Adat Yakshi don't play well with others oftentimes, um, or they're manipulative, you know? Um, and maybe being with other manipulative people, is they, they're like, yeah, because they can't manipulate each other, right? So it's like, so it's, so it's rough, you know? Um, but they obviously, th- those two sisters loved each other very, very much, you know? Um, so I, so I question this, that their, you know, their incapacity for mental fusion of, de- prevents the development of empathy because no other race has that problem and they still develop empathy. But again, sorry, they are biologically inclined towards being able to mind melt. This is how they like really understand other people, other species, other sorry, you know, um, so I think they would be maybe stunted in, in an Asari viewpoint, um, but I don't think they would be totally inca- incapable. They would just have to develop a empathy like how other species that don't mind melt do, you know. And again, their biology may not really let them do that because they're, they're, they're wired for this mind melding, um, but they can't do that without killing, you know, or creating harm in any case. And I swear... There was something else. The Reaper called Har- Banshee. Banshees are the corrupted Asari often found leading a Reaper strike force. The Reapers create them specifically from Asari yep. with active or latent predispositions to becoming Ardot Yakshi, a rare neurological condition that enhances the Asari's biotic power while causing the immediate death of anyone she mates with. Lumbering as though in constant pain, the emaciated banshees are surprisingly durable opponents. They are devastating biotics, able to hurl lethal balls of energy and create shock waves as they regenerate. What Alliance military finds most disturbing is the banshee's ability to spawn her own warp field and seemingly teleport during combat. Although their whales have no apparent physiological effect, the psychological impact is undeniable. Yep. When banshees die, their Ardot Yakshi genetics twist against them, causing a biotic implosion to ensure they evade capture. And something, again, I think we will come across a lab at some point where you see a little bit more information about the Ardot Yakshi, the, ban- the banshees, rather. Um, but. If you notice, if you go back, you'll notice that they're bloated, essentially, right? Um, and I remember there's something we read or something we find out, and I have to say it now. Again, this is a little bit spoilery for later, but it was it's going to be on like a side mission. Is that we read earlier that Arda actually are congenitally sterile, right? They cannot have children even when when they even when they mate. You know, even if their mate doesn't die, they can't have kids, um, and it's interesting to note that this bloating is similar to what a pregnancy would look like, right? And oh, there must be something, I, I know I've read something about it or like an, an entry somewhere about it, but it, it basically likens it to a twisted form of pregnancy and they walk like they're carrying a chi- like a twisted version of a child almost, you know? And they walk like they're in constant pain. And even now, like you saw like that banshee when she killed Rila, like she stabbed her, but she held her so gently. You know, and it looked like she was going to bite her face off. But what the Ardot Yakshi crave, and what I think a, res- a residual part of them craves as a banshee is connection, right? Like they cannot ever truly connect. And the way the Asari connect, they cannot do that. And it 
it has to be painful on some level, right? Like this inability to like truly connect with another entity, you have to feel very isolated and alone. Um, and so, and I think some art I actually would even like potentially like try to form a connection without knowing, right, that they would, that they're going to hurt this person or whatever, or that like a part of them doesn't understand, right? And so they're trying to constantly form this connection and some of it, they do get addicted to it after a time, right? And they enjoy the killing. But like, I think initially maybe they'd be like not understanding, at least some of them, right? Where they just want this connection and then it just implodes and they're like, what, you know, what? What is this? You know, is this is this what this is? Is this connection? You know, but you still feel isolated. You have to do more and more and more. It's like never enough, right? And so, yeah, for the for the banshee. And again, there's a, there's 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 an argument to be made that like, I don't know, where it's like not everybody who can't have kids wants to have them, and not every female body or whatever, you know means that you want to desire there's that whole argument right i'm not even gonna go, gonna go very far into that where it's like just because you have a uterus doesn't mean you crave children you know what i mean um but again i think it ties to like some of the connection aspect right like the inability to connect with something that you have made or to connect with another ed person and then you know you create life because the sorry can decide right when they mind meld like they don't have to get pregnant it's just it's whenever they want you know so when they reproduce it's because they really really want to you know um and there would potentially be a part for for many arda yakshi asari where it's like they can't like they can't have children they can't continue on like you know they, they can't i don't know like you can't not even continuing on a legacy but you can't create a life and you can't even a bigger, you can't create a separate life, but you can't really create your own life in some ways because you, you feel like you lack this, like, ability to connect. I don't know, now I'm getting into, now I'm getting super esoteric. But um, I do think it's it's a fascinating and a tragic thing, right? And there's, there's something in that codex entry that you see eventually where it talks about how, like, the screams of the banshee are, like, them their pain like they are they are in pain like this whole time and it's this whole like like this twisted form of rebirth and i don't know it's something i'll we'll have to find it i can't freaking think of it exactly but um it's just something to that effect where it's like the inability to reproduce carries over into the banshee form and and there's like something about like how like that's why that the bloating is there is this it's this like twisted form of of reproduction and they're constantly when, when they're reaching out like they are they're trying to like that's what i think it is it's like something about like they're trying to form this connection even as banshees and like i don't it's something like that i don't know i'm gonna stop <laughs> going into that that's a whole other freaking thing i guess uh but Thank you all so much for joining me on this one. I think we're going to go ahead and call it. Sorry, I'm looking. Oh, yes, okay. Is Weshra, Weshra, I think she's the human who's saying that her partner was deployed and they have a child, right? That they, that they don't know like she, she can't she can't stay with the human parents or whatever um but yeah thank you all for listening to me ramble this one was a big rambly one i really do love stuff to do with the art at yakshi and samara like the whole justice car code thing like i said before i did some i did some really cool papers at least in my mind i did some cool papers on um like the, the the philosophy and like not really the psychology but sort of like a behavioral analysis i guess you could say of stuff like this and i i so i find i find the idea of the ardat yakshi and the asari and the jester cars like well the, the ardat yakshi dark side essentially of the asari and like the jester cars and all that i find it to be very very interesting stuff um and it makes the world the universe like this in-game universe a lot more like have, have a lot more depth to it in my mind so um Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. <laughs> really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Risk Leader, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam.
my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me and the channel, and who I just cannot say thank you to enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.